Okay, welcome everybody. This is CSIS 3020 Web Programming and Design. This is week five. Okay. Let's see. <clears throat> I have also shared with you video lecture from a previous semester. <clears throat> on JavaScript chapters 10 and 11 from the textbook and I have also shared the exercises that I go through in that video lecture so hopefully most of you have been able to watch it <coughs> and do the exercises that I share with you on Eclipse For tonight, we're going to do something really fun. At this point, you guys should already know HTML, because getting style sheets, and everything that you need to know about JavaScript except jQuery. Okay? <coughs> so, what I'm planning on doing is covering jQuery for next week. Okay? I have shared with you guys a book. I hope you guys start reading um, the book. And it's called jQuery, Apply jQuery, Develop and Design. Okay? It's a book that already assumes that you know JavaScript, so it's not going to go through the basics of JavaScript and stuff like that and it's going to jump right away into examples. This is how you do it in JavaScript. Guess what? This is how you do it in jQuery. And everything, you're going to start seeing everything is so much more simple, straightforward when it's done in jQuery. Okay? Even the syntax. It's very, very similar to J JavaScript, but it's much more simplified so it will help a lot because if you can build all your JavaScript widgets using uh, jQuery you're going to be better off okay are there any questions as far as the JavaScript is concerned Everybody good with JavaScript? Okay. Um, the homework from now on, and this is due to the fact that some of you have to work during the week or in the evenings, whatever. The homework will not be due on Friday evenings. They will be due on Sunday midnight. So you guys have an extra two days to work on, especially a weekend, which helps a lot, I know. Uh, so you have Saturday and Sunday to work on, and that includes week five. Week five homework, which is the third web page. And in my case, my third web page, if you have any doubts of what my third page is, is just go to my wiki. It's the list of main entity. My main entity, as you guys already know, is timesheets. So my third page is going to be a timesheet list. And I hope you guys develop for this Sunday something equivalent to timesheet list or whatever your main entity is. Improve your home page with any of my feedback. I know that I have done most of you, probably I'm, I'm about to, I think I'm, I'm only like four or five students left to grade, that's it. But most of you has, al has already gotten my feedback. So I want you to please improve your home page and login based on my feedback. OK? 
Okay? That's important. And registration page. Registration page, if you have any doubts of what it should look like, just go into my wiki and you will see mine. I have UI sketches of timesheet list. I have UI sketches of registration. Take a look at how I did mine, what's included. And update your wiki. Always. Anything new that you create, any new snapshot, any new functional requirement that you add, add it to the wiki. Okay? Otherwise, it's really nonsense losing 50 points just because you failed to or forgot to update your wiki. Okay? Any questions? Yes, it's okay to resubmit it. Just make sure that you send me a message so I can reset your submission. Uh, but yeah, you have till Sunday midnight to submit it. Always come here to what's due and you know, cause and read it carefully because I'm ex I'm describing exactly what I am expecting from you in the homework. Not only that, but take a look at my code the week before. So if you guys go to last week's Timex code, and that's, where's week four? Here it is, Timex website version three. This is me sharing with you my project, which is exactly what I'm expecting from you this Sunday. So you guys have a week early version of my project. This, if you download it and import it into Eclipse, you don't have to, but uh, if you download it and execute it, time, Timex code version 3, you will see that it has timesheet list, it will have registration, it will have login, okay, and you can actually click, click on it, try it. Try logging and submitting the login. You will be taken to timesheet list. Try timesheet list. You will be taken to another page. Everything is linked. And each one of those pages is an exact copy, snapshot of what I published in the wiki. Okay? And that's exactly what I'm expecting from you for this Sunday. <coughs> now, and this is something that I noticed from the last submission that you guys turn in. For most of you, it did not make sense to create a brand new page called login. Why? Because it looked bare. It looked, it looked like it didn't make sense to have a whole page just for two boxes and a button. Okay? So what I want you to do, if my feedback was it does not make sense to have login as a separate page incorporated into your home page. Somewhere in some corner, in some area that it's empty in your home page, just add him. It's just username, password, and a button that says login. That's all. Okay? So get rid of login page and just add it to the home page. It makes more sense. Okay? And in fact, that's exactly what I'm going to be doing with mine. I'm going to uh, I'm going to add the login page to I'm sorry, I'm going to add the login um functionality to my home page. So I don't have to have a a separate login page. And Anybody heard of the Raspberry Pi? Yeah? Okay. Raspberry Pi is a computer. It's a $25 to $30 computer. There it is. 
okay and for those of you that are online that cannot see my Raspberry Pi you can just go and look at one in Wikipedia or whatever this is it okay mine has an enclosure I think that's why it's thirty five dollars basically it has the same microprocessor as one of these phones okay and it has a hard drive which is an SSD card and it has two USBs one for the mouse and one for the keyboard it has a network connector it has a HDMI so you can connect to a monitor, flat monitor. It also has sound and video in another format. And it has the power. And the power is a micro USB. Okay? As soon as you connect the micro USB power, you will be let me see if I can do this. Yep, there it is. It's putting up Linux. Okay? The Linux is burned on the SSD. So you go out there and you can find Raspberry Pi projects. Okay? And there's tons of them. Did it do anything? Where are you? Is it gone? Oh, here it is. Raspberry Pi. So as you can see, it has a desktop. It's a terminal. It has a, a browser. It has a whole bunch of stuff. Okay. $35 computer. And this is what we're going to do. So I have booted it up. And <clears throat> you can find all kinds of projects online. But this one is specifically a project that will turn our Raspberry Pi into a web server. In fact, it's such a really good web server that you interactively are going to be able to do your HTML, your cascading cell sheet, your JavaScript, edit it, and view live. Sort of like what W3Schools does for you, but you can see live your code running. And it's Called coder. Ah. Coder. Okay. So, what is it? It's a simple way to make web stuff on a Raspberry Pi. You can download the one gig file and burn an SSD with it. And then you just pretty much hook it up to the same network. And I have done that. I have hooked it up to the same network as my laptop is right now. And so now I'm ready we gotta find out what's the IP address assigned to it so let me switch quickly to the Raspberry Pi 77.195 so now 137.52.177.195 Oops, you're right. Yeah, one too many numbers.
<laughs> this connection is untrusted. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. I understand the risks. Add the exception. Confirm the security exception. This is the browser trying to warn you about. All right. So welcome to quarter for Pi. This is it. So let's see. So now, as you guys can see, I'm in my laptop, right? That's what I'm recording. I am using Firefox browser. I have written in here in my URL the IP address of my Raspberry Pi, which is running under the same network, right? And it's answering all my, you know, like a regular web server. It's answering all my requests. <coughs> and we need to log in. Reset. Oh, forget it. You know what? We're, we'll do it after the break. Because this is a long process and, and it's going to take a little while. I can't remember the password, to be honest with you. Um... So we're going to have to do it after the break. <laughs> Sorry about that. <clears throat> Alright. In the meantime, for next week, what I want you guys to start doing is download your... For those of you that are in Windows, download your WAMP server. Obviously, you guys are not going to be building your website in a Raspberry Pi. That would be really cool, but um, it's not there yet. Okay, we need a much more robust web server. So for those of you that are in Windows machines, that's Windows 7. I have never tested in Windows 8, to be honest with you. Windows 7 or Windows XP. I need you to download WAMP server. WAMP server. That stands for Windows, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. It's a server that has all that stack. Apache, the web server, MySQL, the database server, and PHP, the interpreter. Server-side scripting interpreted for the PHP language. When you download one of these guys, it will download an ex in EXE on Windows. Okay? There's also a version for the Mac and there's uh, also a version for the for the Linux. See that? WAMP server 2.4 x64. That means that it's for a 64-bit machine. So you better have a 64-bit machine. If you don't, then you're going to have to download a previous version for a 32-bit machine. In my case, I have a 32-bit machine because this is an old laptop running Windows XP, which you guys know Windows XP runs only under 32-bit. So, <coughs> I download my 32-bit version and installed it. All right? I need you to be able to do that for next week because starting next week we're going to start using this server, the web server especially. Not so much the PHP or the MySQL yet, but we're going to start using the web server. So I need you to be prepared for it. For for Linux users there's actually one for the Mac and one for <coughs> download LAMP stack for the Mac you will you will have to download an installer 
Okay, here is LAMP Stack Installer. You can download this one, the LAMP Stack 5.4, 73 megabyte. When you download it, it will try to download a dot run, which for those of you who have Macintosh, you know that that would automatically execute, so almost like the EXE in Windows, it will execute and install the Linux, because Mac is under a distro version of Unix. Uh, it will install the Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. And for Linux users, Ah, they can use the same one probably. Or you can do um, an automatic installation with apt-get. You can use yum if you have a, a specific version of Linux or an RPM. I think for for Ubuntu it's much much more simple than that yeah that's what I thought it's just as simple as saying sudo apt-get install apache2 and that would automatically install the main. Oh, there's a step two. Then you gotta install the MySQL server. And there's probably step three. Yep. Which is the one that installs the PHP. So you gotta do it in three separate steps. Okay. Oh, and four. Oh, that, that's after the installation, so the, it's just to make sure that you you have installed it correctly. All right, steps one, two, and three: how to install Linux, Apache, MySQL, PHP, LAMP stack on Ubuntu. So, any one of those, pick your machine, pick your operating system, um, your version of the architecture, 32-bit, 64-bit, and install it and be ready for next week because next week I'm going to start deploying my project the one that I'm sharing with you every week with the stuff that you're supposed to turn in the following week I'm going to be starting using my project and running it under the Apache server okay so just be aware of that also read the book the jQuery book because we're going to be covering really cool um, widgets that you guys are going to uh, that you guys are going to have to include in your in your project. Um, cool widgets like the accordion menu, like the um, calendar. <coughs> or date picker, whatever you want to call it. <coughs> and I will be implementing the date picker and I will be implementing a really cool JavaScript menu. So I will be replacing my cascading style sheet menu with a JavaScript menu. So you guys can see how I am applying JavaScript to my project. And that's exactly what you guys are going to be doing next week, actually. Next week, next Sunday, not this coming Sunday, but the following Sunday, you guys will have to include JavaScript validation for registration and JavaScript uh, date picker and JavaScript uh, menus. Are there any questions? There's no questions? Oh, that's
that's a good question, yes. What is jQuery? You sit down, what is it? Well, jQuery, if you go to jQuery.com, right? Actually, jQuery, all it is, is a library of widgets written in JavaScript. So, instead of you guys having to dig in heavily into JavaScript to create these really user-friendly widgets, somebody, in fact, a whole community of developers out there in the world, have created jQuery libraries with tons of cool widgets, very user-friendly widgets. Okay, And all you have to do is download jQuery library. And the jQuery library is nothing else than a .js. It's a text file that ends in .js extension okay, that contains JavaScript code. And it does, all you have to do is download it and include it in your project. So let's see, for instance, a really cool example. It's the uh, well, the hide and show is probably the simplest one, right? And uh, something like this. If you click on the hide button, I will disappear. And if you click on my show button, then I will show up. It's something very simple, right? But there are more sophisticated ones. And remember, the, the idea of JavaScript is to be able to provide client side, that means on the browser side, right? Client side code that will execute locally on, on your computer without having to go to the web server. Um, this one, for instance. The fade out. See that? How they fade out? <laughs> and they can fade out at different times. Look at the last one took almost forever to fade out. Some really cool stuff. I mean, and that's the one you have to use in your project. And include the jQuery library. And that's it. So you guys can use that widget. See that? I'm sure you guys have seen this in many websites, usually very user-friendly websites. You just click on the box, they're asking you for a birth date or, I don't know, what kind, some kind of date. And you should be able to pull up a calendar with today's year, month, and day. And you can pick whatever date. And as soon as you pick the date, it will automatically translate to you in the locale um, format. In our case, the U.S. format is two digits for the month, dash, two digits for the day, dash, two, uh, four digits for the year. Right? And you can actually disable specific dates. Look at this. So when you create your widget and initialize it, you can actually tell it to disable some of the dates. Right? Depends on the applicability of, 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 of your date picker or whatever. Or the purpose of it. Or if you want to highlight some of the dates for whatever reason and you can provide that and if you want you know a date from with a different format like date month and year which is the European standard you can do that anyway but you get the point 
right? And it's as simple as downloading the jQuery library, JS, and the snippet, the snippet of code that you have to include in your page, and you got it. Obviously, you have to customize it for your need. The name of the field that you are trying to get. This is another really cool one. jQuery Accordion. Accordion widget. So this, I like, I like this. Look, this is all you have to do. You have to create your menus as H3s and divs, and the major div has to have the ID accordion, and that's it. <laughs> the rest of the stuff is done by your J, by the jQuery. Okay. the examples this is the example so some of you for instance I know I know you're gonna have to do this type of menu because you're gonna have a lot of options under your sub menus and therefore the accord since you only have so much real estate, right? You're gonna have to use an accordion. Otherwise you will end up with a huge menu and sub menus on the left hand side or right hand side, whatever you whatever your your navigational bar is. And you don't want that. You you want to do it with an accordion style menu. All right. No questions. Okay, so let's take a break. In the meantime, I will be fixing my Raspberry Pi so that it doesn't ask me for a password, and then we'll come back and try the web server in the Raspberry Pi.